be signed DLM conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Krishna Bodanapu, non-executive chairman, signed DLM. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Krishna Bodhanapu, non-executive chairman of Signed DLM, and welcome to Signed DLM's uh, earnings calls for quarter four of FY24. Present with me on this call are Anthony Montalbano, the CEO of Signed DLM, and Srinivas Kulkarni, the CFO of Signed DLM. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available in our investor update, which has been posted on our website. Our growth momentum continues, and we were able to post strong results in Q4. We broke our previous record of highest ever revenue in a quarter, which is a testament to the ability in strong execution and aligns with the broad growth that is being seen in the industry. When I look back at FY24, it is great to see several positive developments. After a successful IPO, we continue to see a lot of interest from investors in signed DLM. We have received several customer appreciations, awards, and recognitions during this year. Our order execution capability has instilled higher confidence in our clients, which is now reflected in our pipeline. Our customer engagements have been far more collaborative and conversations are forward-looking with all our top clients. We have had some uncertainty due to the israel Hamas war, but our supply chain and execution performance kept our confidence high throughout the year. Our Israel business, or our business that's dependent on Israel customers or supply chain, continues to do very, very well, and we're grateful for them for their resiliency in the uncertain times that they face, and we're quite confident that this will continue into the next years at, um, uh, or go going forward. The outlook for FY25 looks promising, and we're, we're really excited about the prospects that we see ahead. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank my team, customers, suppliers, and the entire investment community for being a part of Sign DLM's successful journey in FY24. As we step into FY25, our first full year as a publicly traded company, we will stay ahead of the curve and support our clients in managing the growth that they are seeing. I now hand over the call to Anthony and Srini and request them to walk us through the business updates and financial performance. Anthony, over to you. Great. Thank you, Krishna. So I thought I'd start and uh, as we finish off our uh, first fiscal year here, uh, I thought it would I, I be important to give a view on how the industry um, continues to you know, traject for us. And so, you know, we continue to get, you know, very strong, uh, you know, what I call, you know, tailwinds from what's been happening in the industry from a, you know, global, um, global uh, supply chain and solution perspective. Uh, this has been referred to as the China Plus One strategy. This is where regions, including India as well as others, uh, are seeing new opportunities. Uh, and this is this is very strong. Uh, this has been a very strong driver of business for us, um, including the specific uh, aspects of what we're seeing in India uh, on the EMS market there. Uh, in that regard. Uh, you know, the e even the EMS industry overall uh, is is simply massive, right? You're you're looking at a uh, you know at a trillion dollar industry that uh, has a you know a stagger of 5.4 percent at that level, uh, with the Indian market uh, growing at much higher uh, rates, uh, which we'll cover here in a minute. And so, you know, this this really um, is is an an outcome of not just what's happening from a geopolitical and 
uh, aspects, but also just there's significant technology uh, changes happening across various sectors. Um, yeah, this includes um, you know EVs, you know, communications, uh, AI, uh, Industry 4.0. So you know all these all these you know factors uh, continue to combine uh, to give us a you know very you know robust um, you know opportunity uh, to grow uh, in this market. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So. You know, the part of the market that Sci and DLM is focused on uh, is 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 a, is a specific aspect of it in, in two in two parts. So first of all, you know, we focus on uh, you know what we call uh, you know, high mix, low volume. Okay, so um, this is um, this part of the market often involves. What we call mission and safety critical electronics manufacturing services. Uh, you know, these are electronics uh, that go into you know, aircraft, medical devices, um, very high reliability type uh, industrial applications. And so, you know, this segment, um, and and especially, you know, in India, this this segment is having. Very high growth rates. We're we're seeing you know 30% uh, you know growth rates over um, you know over just a few years alone. So th this is driving a, a considerable um, you know, a considerable amount of new opportunities that were uh, really not even slated uh, you know for these sectors in the past. And you know the, the focus areas for us uh, really air and defense, medical and industrial. This is our core. Uh, these are the areas that we are seeing the most growth uh, with our core clients. And uh, you know, at our size business, and when you look at the size of the market overall, uh, you know, there is just a tremendous amount of runway in front of us, uh, just focusing on these core sectors. And so, this is really part of our DNA, and um, and this is where we'll you know, continue to add value for uh, for our clients. Uh, really, for the foreseeable future. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So, you know, get, getting now down to specifically to you know, Science DLM as we look at some key highlights of the year. You know, we've had a you know, very strong year in terms of growth. Uh, you know, we've had to uh, make some investments and and, um, and 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 really expand in order um, uh, to support this. So. You know, we did um, uh, we did inaugurate a new facility in Bangalore, uh, focused on uh, precision machining, and uh, this was a facility that we greenfielded, and we have some of our you know, large key clients in there. Uh, this is a, a really a unique offering uh, for for the EMS space. This is really more along like a vertical integration aspect of it. Where we're bringing you know value to our clients beyond just uh, standard uh, EMS uh, type services, and then we also um, just recently, a couple weeks back, uh, inaugurated a new manufacturing facility uh, in Mysore, and so this is really just adjacent to our core operation. Uh, this is uh, really a, a great opportunity to. Uh, expand in a key region for us, uh, where we have a lot of our key clients. Uh, this also gives us um, more space and capability and capacity uh, to not only ex you know uh, support the current business growth, but also uh, business that we have forecasted um, in in other parts, not just EMS, but also uh, areas such as you know cable and wire harness and and other types of offerings that we can bring to our clients. So. Um, those are some key expansions that we completed this past year, and you know some 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 investments also that we've made on the capabilities uh, you know perspective. Uh, you know, so built to spec, you know, the ability to do design and manufacturing is really a core differentiator for us. Uh, you know, on our on our last quarter call, we highlighted uh, that we brought in a CTO uh, for our business. Uh, to help drive this specifically, um, and and this this is 
directly aligned to some very strategic programs uh, that we will be announcing where we are bringing these types of solutions to our clients. And uh, this is really a unique differentiator for us as it continues um, uh, you know, continues the relationship that we have uh, with science engineering and allows us to bring those integrated solutions to our clients. And so this is really a uh, unique capability that, that we can bring forward and that we are really gaining momentum in. Uh, we've also invested uh, in the supply chain. Uh, this, is, this has been probably a number one pain point that we've heard across the industry, usually amongst the top um, discussion points with many of our clients. Uh, the good news is, is that it's, uh, it's really improved, right? It, when we look at the outlook, there's still a tremendous amount of focus on supply chain, but it's uh, very different uh, than when it was, you know, about a year and a half back where um, there was still uncertainty and, you know, now this, uh, this appears to be uh, much more stabilizing that trend and outlook uh, seems to have a pretty broad sentiment. And so for us, though, we have continued to invest in this area so we can actually provide solutions to our clients from a supply chain perspective. That means designing in alternate components. That means, you know, being able to uh, work with the supply base uh, proactively and really bring just a higher value offering in there. And so we brought in uh, you know, leadership and also mid-level uh, talent uh, in that organization uh, to really help um, us lead the industry in that regard. We've also uh, invested in, uh, in go-to-market and key sales talent, uh, really making some um, you know, key hires to help with the engagement that's required uh, for the type of clients we work with. We, you know, we have a relatively small number of clients for the size of the business we run. Our, our strategy is focused on working with industry-leading uh, OEMs uh, and, and drive our growth uh, along with them. And this, uh, this past year has worked out well in that regard. A lot of our growth has come from working with these top clients, and, uh, and we'll also discuss some of the new logos that we've added as well. And so, um, you know, these, these, key, these key investments uh, really have, um, uh, you know, led to some recognition in the industry. Uh, you know, we received, uh, you know, awards from the, you know, electronic sector. Uh, we received supplier excellence awards, um, you know, and then also uh, just some, you know, national export awards as well, just, you know, recognition of the growing impact we're having regionally here um, as, as we continue to grow our business um, in India and globally. Uh, next slide. So to expand a bit on, you know, as we look forward, uh, you know, what our strategy is, right? We've, we've, we've completed a, you know, a successful FY24. And as, as we look at FY25 and beyond, you know, some key things that really stand out for us is that we are, you know, we are focused on, on large deals. Um, again, you know, we, we work with large OEMs for the most part in high value segments, uh, which we've discussed. And so the transactions that we do with them are in relatively large scale, especially for a company of our size. And, um, you know, this this really gets into um, you know more of the not just the size of the opportunities, but also the depth. Uh, we talked a little bit about the you know built in specification um, aspects, you know, enabling um, design services along with manufacturing, and, uh, and and this allows us to go in and even as we you know, work with our sales team and look at our key accounts and you know put a, you know, robust account planning aspect uh, in play for this, you know, we're really just scratching the surface uh, on many of these key accounts. So we, we just see uh, these fundamentals as being, you know, very strong pillars as we drive uh, the growth of our business. One other part is, um, you know, we also have a, you know, an inorganic uh, strategy that we are uh, executing well on. And uh, we, we see this as having uh, 
what I'd call material impact uh, going forward as we continue to add uh, capability, uh, capacity, and also potential geo offerings. Uh, we will be making um, some additional updates uh, in that regard as soon as we're able, but uh, that is progressing nicely and uh, excited to bring more updates uh, in that regard soon. And, um, you know, we will also continue, you know, I've highlighted the importance of the core industries that we are focused on, uh, you know, air and defense, medical and industrial. Uh, but that being said, we have had opportunities um, in, in other sectors, and we will continue to evaluate those, uh, there, there, and, and there could be an opportunity there to look at areas like uh, EVs or automotive or communications uh, where there's the right value profile. Uh, we will definitely take a look at those opportunities, and we have, uh, and we have been doing so. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and go to our next slide. So that that kind of covers uh, you know really from it, the business overview and the strategy overview uh, of kind of you know, where we've been and the direction we're going. And um, I'll turn it over to uh, Srinivas, our CFO, to give more details on some of the finance updates. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining the call today, and uh, thank you for interest in time BLM. This being the first year of operations for us as a listed company, we are happy to present the full year financials for FY24 along with our, our quarter four performance. So first I'll walk you through uh, Q4 and then we'll spend a few minutes on the full, full year results. We closed Q4 with a revenue of 3,618 million uh, rupees or 361.8 crores, which represents a year-on-year -year growth of 30.5%. Our operating profit for the quarter is 38 crores, which is a year-on-year -year growth of 19.2%. We had mentioned that we will reach double-digit margin in Q4, and we are pleased to report a 10.5% EBITDA margin for the quarter. Our profit after tax is 227 million rupees, or 22.7 crores, which is a year-on-year -year growth of 80.7%, and the PAT percentage is 6.3%, which is 175 basis higher than the same quarter previous year. We closed the year with an order backlog of uh, 21,705 million uh, rupees. This has declined by 262 crores when compared to the same quarter previous year. We will get into the details of the order book and the sales pipeline in the subsequent slides. Uh, the next slide. A trend on the revenue, operating profit, and net profit over the past five quarters. Uh, and as you can see in all the metrics, we have a nice trajectory of growth and improvement, which we hope to sustain in the coming years. We can uh, we'll take a quick look at some of the other KPIs which are important and give an indication of the overall health of the business. If you see our net working capital, it is at 79 days, which is the lowest it has been in the past four quarters. This metric is best looked at as an average for the year and not at any point in time. However, just to give some color on how the working capital has was managed in Q4, we were able to drive collections and reduce the overall OD receivables to end the DSW at 57 days. We were also able to reduce our inventory holding by 20 days in Q4. There were no new significant customer advances, and this number will go down as we square off the previous advances with revenue uh, as we book those revenues. The next result of all of these actions meant that we generated a positive free cash flow of nearly 129 crores, which is a significant achievement for us. This number would have been higher but for the holidays in the last week of March, and some of the collections spilled over into uh, uh, April as well. In terms of the mix of the business, there is not much change from what we have presented earlier. Our, our growth, as you can see, is driven by aerospace and defense. We have taken several steps to focus on industrial and medtech and should see higher share of business from these verticals as we go forward. PCBA and exports continue to be about two-thirds of our businesses, and that share has, uh, has remained almost consistent for the last few quarters.
we now uh, will reflect on the full year performance our revenue for the year is a little shy of uh, 1200 crores at 1191.9 crores which is a growth of 43.2% year on year our operating profit grew by 26.5% year on year and our net profit by 92.9% year on year the fixed asset turnover ratio reveals how efficient we are at generating sales from our existing fixed assets and we are happy to report that we have improved from about 6.8x last year to about 8.6x in the current year our debt to equity ratio is healthy and we still have the ipo proceeds to help us fund the growth requirements in the next two years while we close the year with a net working capital of 79 days as i said earlier we should look at the average net working capital it, it is more than 100 days for us in the year this is higher than where we want to be and our near term goal is to bring this to about 90 days and then improve from there on our fcf for the full year is is uh, negative 104 crores uh, and uh, and and even though this is negative it is manageable and 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 in control given the 40 plus percent growth that we saw in the business uh the, this slide provides a tabular view of the pnl for q4 and for full year it has comparative to the previous quarter previous year right which you can refer to uh, we have discussed most of these points in the previous slide and i'll hand hand i'll not spend too much time on this just a couple of call outs as you can see the year on year increase in employee cost has resulted in lower ebitda growth compared to the revenue growth these were planned investments in headcount to strengthen the team for the growth we see in the business uh, as we add scale this number will not increase linearly and we'll start seeing the benefits of absorption kicking in our pat growth uh, is significantly higher than the operating growth because of the increase in other income uh, other income as you all know is higher because of the ipo proceeds as we use the funds to grow the business we will start seeing the benefits getting converted into higher operating costs a quick look at our, the mix of industry and product category and how it changed from fy23 to fy24 our industry mix has changed in fy24 with a higher share of revenue coming from aerospace and defense industry Uh, while we take advantage of the higher traction we are seeing in this in the industry we remain committed to building a more diversified portfolio as alluded by anthony in his earlier slides uh, we also see the share of our business from pcb has increased in uh, fy24 we have as mentioned in the past do not have any preference on the split between box build pcb or other parts of our businesses as these are driven by specific programs and customer preferences our objective will be to maintain uh, and enhance the margins despite the product mix that we are into lastly on the ipo proceeds utilization uh, we have uh, cleared the external debt and have used approximately 80 crores for funding the working capital requirement that was used towards growth and a small amount towards uh, capex there are no deviations in the usage of funds from the objects stated in the rhp uh, So with that, we conclude the presentation and open up the floor for uh, questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles We'll take a first question from the line of Vipro Srivastava from Incred Research please go ahead Oh uh, hi am I audible Yes please Hello? go ahead Yes please Yeah sure. so this yeah first question was regarding uh, Uh, the geopolitical thing in europe so uh, i mean client has clients like thales and rafael a company like thales is seeing huge order inflows because of the whole geopolitical thing so uh, is it a possible opportunity for dlm where do we see assets in that sort of space uh, without any lag to speak yeah I'm audible, right? 
Yeah, I, I can answer that uh, question. Uh, I, I, I caught the question. So, so I think uh, there is, a, in general, there is a fairly significant uh, increase in defense uh, requirements and in defense spend uh, by uh, our by governments and therefore from our clients. So we are seeing um, a, a, a sort of outcome or direct benefit of some of that also coming through. Uh, there's also another element because uh, there, there's a number of uh, offset type requirements that are also coming from uh, uh, from the Middle East region in general, and we're also looking at how we can address those uh, more uh, effectively. But to your point, absolutely, there is just more demand with what's going on um, in, in that region, and that is translating to orders uh, for us, um, both in terms of extension of existing orders, but we're also starting to see some, some of our pipeline is building in with uh, some of these new orders. New equipment, new, new type of uh, requirements. Right. right. Uh, uh, second question was regarding uh, uh, the other current liabilities, which is affecting the cash flow statement. So uh, it has uh, that's that has gone up sharply. So how do you see this shaping up for FY25? Uh, I guess it's because of advances from customers. So it has, I guess it has declined. So how do you see it shaping up for FY25? I think we will continue to see the headwind of uh, lower customer advances even as we get into FY25, right? I think uh, that's just the nature of the business. As we move more into non-India businesses and the growth driven by those those industries, uh, there will be uh, uh, that. Uh, but I, I think the way to manage that is to sort of uh, you know control the inventory, right? I think number of days we've had some success uh, in Q4 uh, reducing the inventory days. And we hope to sort of sustain from that going forward. So year on year, we do expect improvement in the net working capital. So the composition might change a little bit in terms of what is playing playing out there. But uh, it will be, uh, you know, we, we hope to be in, in a, at an average of between 90 to 100 days in, in FI25. Right, right. And uh, last question, uh, regarding the Honeywell Anthem deal, uh, which is going into advanced air mobility. So uh, where do you stand currently on that? I mean, a lot of these advanced air mobility companies are vying for certification. So where does Cyan DLM stand? When do you see any order materializing from that, if any? I mean, any timeline if you have for that? Yeah, so as far as specific uh, client programs, uh, we are limited on the amount of detail we can disclose. But as far as what has been... Um, communicated in the past on that uh, this that that sector and these specific engagements um, I would say are very much on are um, really quite strategic for us so uh, th that that's a core part of what we expect to see in the coming fiscal year and the years after that is, is as far as what's been communicated in the past on it okay cool thank you thank you thank you a lot Absolutely. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Venkatesh Balasubramanian from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first question is, when you ended FY23, you had a backlog of almost 24 billion, which was basically order backlog by sales of almost 2.9 times. Now, when you're ending FY24, you're at a backlog of 21.7 billion which is an order backlog of sales of around 1.8 times. While I understand you have these long-term framework agreements with clients, especially somebody like Honeywell, does the fact that your backlog, your first of all order wins in the current year has been much weaker. It's been half the order win that you won last year. So that is why your backlog is weaker. Is that something that we need to be worried about when we are, when we are thinking about revenues for FY25? Or it actually doesn't matter because as we progress into maybe the first or the second quarters, some of these orders will fructify and you will not have any problems of growth. That is the first question. Yeah, I can go ahead and take that. So it, it is, uh, there definitely has been some consumption uh, in the current uh, fiscal year of the order backlog. And, you know, as I indicated earlier in my comments that, you know, we do have uh, some key programs uh, that we will be announcing, which will have uh, quite an impact on building uh, that backlog back in place. So, you know, one, one, 
nice aspect about our business and the sectors that we play in is we actually have a pretty uh, long window of you know order commitments and and outlook right it's it's much different uh than a consumer business for example where you might only get a 3 month view uh in our business we tend to get a you know 9 month view or even longer so uh the the pipeline uh and is is quite robust and then the key programs that uh are progressing uh, towards um, business award, uh, as those come in, that will then uh, provide the positive update on the order backlog that um, I think will help address the point you're bringing up. Yeah. Is it possible to tell us by when will this order backlog build up to another a decent level? Would it be like, you know, is it like possible that, you know, you will have a decent backlog by the end of the second quarter or something like that, you know, whether some of these long-term framework agreements will convert into annual orders before that? Yes, I, I would definitely expect to have some uh, some very solid updates uh, within the next quarter uh, for sure. And then again, that will also uh, continue throughout, um, you know, throughout the fiscal year. Okay, okay. Now the second question is on the customer advances, which is the I think the previous analyst already picked up and actually asked you, uh, is the key reason for the customer advances as a percentage of sales coming down because you have executed a large chunk of the Bharat Electronics orders? Uh, is that the reason why these customer advances have come down? Does that also mean that there are enough and more figures because as Bharat Electronics as a percentage of sales of, of the backlog comes down and your other higher margin orders you start executing, you could have a very decent kind of margin expansion in FI25. Is that a reasonable assumption to make? Yes, yes, that's correct, Venkatesh. I think the the consumption of the order of Bharat, uh, Bharat Electronics, uh, you know, uh, offsetting with the advance that they gave us is one of the primary reasons, right? And uh, see, even even in other clients, I'll say though, the the order, the, the customer advance as a concept, I think, is reducing. I think two years ago, when there was significant pressure on the supply chain, I think there was a tendency to sort of accumulate inventory to you know to secure the inventory right and and customers were happy to give those advances uh, to us but that uh, that as the supply chain is easing out you know we will see that the number reducing what we should see as a corresponding offset is also that inventory is reduces for us right uh, that that is one part of the uh, question that you asked on the other one yes absolutely as the mix of the business changes uh, you know uh, you know, the, the, uh, if you get the other customer orders in uh, in place of uh, orders like the one we spoke about, yes, the margins will expand. But we are we are we are we are continuing to work. It's a key client for us. We will we will want to you know continue working with them, right? And and so, but but as a mix, as a percentage, will definitely not be as high as what it is today. Okay, one last question from my side. I don't know if you want to answer this question. Any indication of uh, potential guidance of revenues or margins for next year that you would like to communicate, or is it something you don't want to talk about? I think we will maintain that uh, you know on a three-year basis we will have a 30 30 percent sort of a CAGR in the past side, right? and we'd like like to just stay with that at the moment. Okay, thanks a lot. All the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meet Jain from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, as the previous participant earlier mentioned, that because of uh, reducing order for consumption of a BEL, our margins are going to improve. Also, in previous quarter, we mentioned that our uh, all the strategic investments has completed. So, can we assume that uh, from FI25 onwards, we will have a good like around 11 percent, 11 12 percent kind of margin which we are used to achieve in FI23? Yeah, we do have a line of sight to improve margins from here on, but with that will be on a full year basis. Uh, we will have some sequential uh, sort of uh, softness in, uh, in in the first couple of quarters because of the way the business is, right? I think we have roughly, uh, if you see our business, 45% of our, our revenue comes in H1 and about 55 in H2. 
So on a full, full year basis, yes, your assumption is correct. It might not increase uh, uh, as much as you are saying, but we will definitely see a line of sight of improving the margins from where we are today. Okay. So another question is on our uh, revenue mix this quarter. Like we are seeing a higher uh, growth in defense segment, like almost seventy-eight percent. So can you uh, just bifurcate this between the international orders or domestic orders? And is this also includes a DL order? Uh, can you please ask the question again? If your voice is not very clear. So I was asking uh, this uh, revenue mix which we shared in the presentation that fifty-six percent is being contributed by the defense segment. And which also saw growth of almost 78%. So, can you bifurcate this between how much is the international mix and how much is the domestic mix? So I think our export to domestic uh, ratio is uh, uh, you know two thirds to one third today, right? One third of our business is domestic. Uh, we uh, see higher wins uh, from exports, so we see that uh, increasing. It's uh, difficult to give a, a percentage prediction of where that number will land. Uh, next year, but we see higher traction in the export business. No, so I want to ask you what what drive what drove a strong growth in the defence segment? Like it increased to almost fifty six percent. No, we are not able to understand you. The voice is really muffled. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Jain, can you please use your handset more? I'm not audible now. Hello. Uh, sir, are you able to hear her? Is it better? Yeah, you can, go ahead. Yeah, so I just want to ask: Our defense segment this quarter grew significantly to by almost 78 percent. So, what was the main uh, reason? Like any big order execution happened? Was it international or domestic? What was driving the defense growth? Sir, can you please repeat the question? Oh, so yeah, so the defense growth is at least the part that we're seeing right now is is being driven. Um, by, by some of the opportunities that we have um, in in the Middle East and in India. That, that, that's what it today. Okay. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rakesh Vadwani from Monarch AIF. Please go ahead. Hi, am I, hi, yes, yes. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, ha, thank you, team, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, can you talk? Uh, sir, a few data point questions. Uh, can you please tell us the amount of customer advances uh, for the year ending? Absolute amount. What did you want? You want the number of advances? Advances at the end, uh, advances from customer. <laughs> So last year that number was a two zero two crore, which is mentioned in the balance sheet uh, schedules. So what is the number for the this year? I think it's, uh, so we've reflected that more in terms of twenty five days, uh, right? So, yes. I, I yes. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. You're not clearly audible. Uh, no, sir. Can you come closer to the microphone, please? I think Hello. I can't hear, hear at all. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I request you to stay connected while we reconnect the management team. Yes, we have the management team back on call. Uh, sorry, sir, we can't hear you again. No, no, we were, we were waiting for the question. Sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, Mr. Vadwani, uh, can sir, you please? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, sir, last year uh, in the balance sheet was mentioned the advances from the customer was 202 crore. Can you please talk about that number at the end of the year, end of, end of this year? What is that number? Yeah, I don't have that uh, number readily available with me. We have reflected that at the end of Q4, we have 25 days of advances. So we can uh, do a quick math from there backwards. If you want separately, you can connect and I can share that number with you. 
ओके ओके एंड सर सेकंड क्वेश्चन ऑन द आईपीओ फंड आईपीओ फंड्स दैट वी रेज सो वी दिस ईयर वी यूटिलाइज 79 79 करोड़ फॉर द वर्किंग कैपिटल पर्पस जस्ट वांटेड टू नो व्हाट विल बी द फ्यूचर ट्रेजरी बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट ईयर वी विल बी सो दिस इज वी विल बी अर्निंग गुड प्रॉफिट दिस ईयर आल्सो वी अर्न प्रॉफिट नेक्स्ट ईयर देयर विल बी विल बी अर्निंग प्रॉफिट सो द द major chunk of the working capital requirement that is required in the coming years will be funded from the internal resources only so there will be always huge amount of like 150 to 200 crore cash on the books every time is there any uh, thoughts on the on that no i am really unable to hear i don't know if the audio tower and sorry about it uh, I, th- i think i got the gist of your question you basically asking what is the trajectory of the uh, the net working capital is just what you want to understand uh yeah i just want to know what the utilization of uh, ipo sure, funds in the coming year can you use your handset mode please ah uh, yes sure so just wanted to understand the utilization of fund in the coming years because there will be huge amount of cash in the books as we are progressing making good amount of profits there will be a huge cash flow also in flow yeah yeah so we have consumed about 100, uh, 100 crores of cash this year right and then when we uh, went ipo and we we put on the proceeds that we had Uh, about 300 crores roughly year marked towards the working capital requirements then we have c- certain other objects of the issue year marked towards uh, you know mnda and some for general corporate proceeds whatever was year marked towards re- uh, repaying the extra loan we have already done that so a lot of the money that is left in the books now uh, from the ipo proceeds i think half of it will, will go towards the working capital usage and the remaining uh, towards you know capex general corporate proceeds and uh, uh, mnd okay <coughs> so any guidance on the working capital i think you mentioned 90 to 100 days net working capital cycle like, uh, like you mentioned at the end of fy 25 is that and is that lesson correct yeah that is correct yeah, okay okay thank you thank you best wishes thank you ladies and gentlemen we request you to please use the handset mode while asking a question We'll take the next question from the line of Deval Shah from RBSA Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, Mr. Shah. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, my question is with regards to the uh, box thing. So I understand uh, that that it is a it is a reflection of the order book, but it has fallen from thirty five percent to twenty five percent in this year. So any comments and insight on that? and uh, second question is with regards to uh, our I, uh, during the previous call uh, you mentioned that we are in an advanced stage of uh, discussion with one of the potential acquisition so any progress or any update you want to give on that that uh, uh, inorganic uh, expansion sure so you look from uh, the box build pcba uh, mix right i think uh, we really as i said right we don't have any particular preference i think these are driven by program specific requirements and customer preferences a number of times uh, you know the customer prefers to do the box build uh, themselves so i think they using the pcba that we develop from our perspective frankly there is no difference in the margins we make on a box build versus a pcba and we are happy to sort of help help the customer with whatever they need right so we don't have a preference one way or the other uh, i don't think we should read too much into that mix change uh, uh, i think the only variable in that is the cable harness as that the business increases you can start seeing better margins because that business comes with higher margins just as because it's more headcount intensive right so between pcb and box build i, I really uh, not read too much into uh, that one right uh, that that's the that one part on, on the second one i think yeah i think the progress uh, is, is is well we are still in the, in the process so we really can't can't tell you at what stage we are in but it's progressing well and then you want to add anything Yeah, exactly. As Sheena, you know, highlighted, uh, you know, what, what we can disclose is that we are pleased with the progress, and um, we we hope to have uh, uh, an update probably on the next call on the specifics of what that looks like. Uh, but it's, um, but again, this is something that will add, uh, you know, capability and um, uh, capability and geographic aspects to it where we can. Um, you know have a, a impact on on what we can bring um our current client and new clients as well 
Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Abhishek Jain from Alpha Accurate Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats for strong set of numbers in fourth quarter. Sir, uh, we have seen a decline in industrial segment revenue in FY24. How do you see recovery ahead? Okay, please share the question again. Sir, we have. Can please use your handset mode. Okay. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, we have seen decline in the industrial segment revenue in FY twenty four. So, how do you see recovery ahead? Sir, Hello. Sir, Sir, did you catch that question? No, we we did not catch the question. All we heard is about something declining, and how do we take it? I, I, yeah, in the um, decline in the industrial segment in FY twenty four. How do we see the uh, recovery? Ah, the the industrial segment. So uh, that is yeah, that is correct. We did have a uh, we we did have some declines in the industrial segment. Uh, uh, that was due to a key client, and uh, we actually do see. um we do see a recovery in that uh sector uh overall and that's not and also we expect to see some growth in that sector with some new clients as well so um yeah that that is a that is a um a sector though that we do see um uh you know growth in uh even though we did have one uh, client that did degrow And uh, sir, uh, we have seen a uh, sharp increase in the gross margin in this quarter. It is because of the better client uh, mix or product mix. Uh, and uh, will this be uh, will it be sustainable in the coming quarter? No, I mean uh, that really depends on the product mix. Right? Like you rightly said, it's a it's a it's a it's a favorable mix this quarter in terms of. Uh, you know the um, uh, revenue from the non india customers being higher than what we have seen in the earlier quarters so you know uh, it's very hard to say what is sustainable because that mix will continue right i think depending on what that mix is for any given quarter that number can can change up or down so but what we can say is for the full year i think uh, we will we will see some improvement in the gross margin and that's what we can uh, sort of talk about Okay, sir. And my last question on the uh, export side. In this quarter, we have seen a very sharp uh, uh, improvement in export numbers. Uh, so, just wanted to understand what is the reason. And second, how was the mix uh, in FY24 uh, export versus uh, domestic in revenue? Yeah, it's roughly uh, two third, one third, right? I think uh, if you see the full year, uh, we did uh, share that slide earlier uh, compared to the earlier year as well. it hasn't changed much from a year on year basis but in q4 there were higher exports compared to domestic right we 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 expect the export business to be higher in fy25 as well compared to what we have seen in 24 so can we assume that it can increase to the 40 45% and uh, that's why the margin will also jump up no i mean it's not it's not dramatically change that much right i think if you are at 66 to 34 it might go up to 70 30 but uh, that that's pretty much what to do uh, uh so okay thank you thank you so much that's all for my side thank you we have a next question from the line of mihir manohar from carnelian asset management please go ahead oh uh, yeah hi thanks for giving the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers I mean, uh, sir, actually mentioned that uh, you know uh, within next quarter you are expecting uh, some solid updates uh, to be there on the order inflow side. I mean, if you can throw is it from the existing customer or a new customer, uh, which segment would broadly this be? And you know, what kind of quantum, what kind of value can this uh, update be? I mean, you know, next time, last time uh, when we had the solid order inflow, the order book had went up from 1200 crores to 2500 crores in a single quarter. Uh, so could it be similar to that, or will it be larger than that? Uh, wanted to understand that. Uh, my second question was on the side. You know, I mean, healthcare. You had last time we mentioned that some OEs uh, are showing inquiries. Uh, so, is there any development happening on the healthcare side with some important OEs are showing inquiries? What is the development over there? 
there we only caught part of the question which I'll address and then I'll request you to say, say the second part of the question and please speak slowly. There is some issue with the audio and we are not able to hear. On the first part of the question, uh, yes, so the, the, the order intake is expected to increase in the coming quarters. See, the nature of this business, you are going to get higher traction from existing clients. It's a long sales cycle with new clients. So uh, while we will see that we've added uh, two good logos during the year and we are likely to add a couple more uh, in the coming quarter, uh, we, we will not see a lot of orders coming from those clients. We will, it will slowly start, right? It, uh, small projects, NPIs, etc. And then it will get into volume production. So what you will see is from the existing customers only uh, 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 with higher uh, traction coming in the coming quarter. There might be one or two logos which will come in and kick in, but those numbers will not be material to the overall order intake. Yeah, please uh, ask your second question again. Yes, sure. And second question was on the healthcare side, you know. Uh, some movies were also showing inquiries on the healthcare side. So is there any development happening over there? What side, sorry? Healthcare, healthcare. 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 Ah. So, sorry, so the question is regarding the outlook on the healthcare business? Yeah, what is the outlook on that? Yeah. So you got it. So, so we are actually working. Uh, we are actually working a couple key opportunities, and um, the outlook is. Um, I would say the outlook is good. Uh, this is. Um, yeah, th this is a, a smaller share of our makeup today, uh, but there, we are. Uh, we will be announcing a, a key client, and um, uh, th there is definitely some. Uh, what I call significant upside potential with that. But again, uh, that segment is one that we have focus on and uh, we expect to see some uh, progress throughout the fiscal year. And um, you'll, you'll see more new logos come in uh, in that segment as well. Sure, uh, that's helpful. Uh, wanted to understand what is the Bharat Electronics order book value currently at the end of FR24? You mean you mean the margin across the specific segment? No, no, no. Is a, is no, no, no. Uh, just the absolute value of Bharat Electronics order. About 55 million that is left in the order book. 55 million uh, dollars. Okay. Yep. And what was this at the, uh, I mean, at the start of the year? What? About 95. Okay, sure, understood. And just one last question on this. I mean, how are gross material margins, I mean, which are there, that is after the material cost, they are roughly 21-22%. So how are, at the company level, how are material margins different for Bharat Electronics contract? So we just can't hear you and we also can't disclose customers. So how are, uh, uh, Srini, how are uh, the uh, margins different for the BEL contract compared to the rest of the contract? Yeah, it's substantially lower. We can't get into specific numbers, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, and, and, and disclose a margin, but, but it, it's substantially lower than the rest of the business. Sure, understood. Thank you. And just one last question. You know, we have repaid the borrowings in second quarter FR24, which is there in the presentation. But however, the finance cost still remains at 8.5 to 9 crores per quarter. Uh, so just wanted to understand why is that the case? So, I mean, please look at other income and finance costs together, right? Uh, I, I think the, the, uh, there have been some, look, we, we, we have two kinds of loans. There's an internal loan and an external loan, right? And, and the repo rates have changed. And that's definitely uh, one of the reasons why. And while we're clear that the external loan, internal loan is still in the books, and we have to keep it at, at, uh, at the market rates, right? Plus, we've had some uh, one-time uh, uh, the forex loss that we have taken in, in the finance costs as well. So those those two factors have, uh, uh, but we will see that going down as we move along in the next year. Okay, so basically the forex adjustment is happening in interest costs and not as a Ah uh, no. Okay, uh, uh, sure. Just one last thing on this on finance costs. Can you just clarify, you know, what was the external debt, uh, external debt and promoter debt that was sitting on the books before the IPO and after the IPO? What is the uh, promoter debt and external debt which is sitting on the books now? So we have roughly 160 uh, crores external debt before the IPO. We have zero as of now. Oh, I understood. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for yeah, that's. It. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Deepak Poddar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, am I audible, sir? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Kodak. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, opportunity. So, first, I just wanted to understand, uh, clarify, uh, I mean, uh, you mentioned, uh, I think, three years we are looking at 30% CAGI growth. So, here we meant revenue, right? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, 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 fair enough. And uh, and uh, you also did mention that on the margin front, we do imp uh, do expect to improve on a YOI basis, but it will not be as high as 11, 12 percent. Uh, I mean, if you have to see next two, three years aspirations, uh, so so any any better margins aspiration we have that in three years, uh, this would be our aspirational margins that we would want to see for our company. Our aspiration is to continue to grow our margins. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, like I said, there are a number of factors that uh, play into uh, what goes into the margin, which is basically the revenue mix, the sort of business that we do, uh, you know, and, and, and also the other uh, engagement terms like the working capital norms, etc. Right? We could tomorrow get into a business which is again low margin, but has very good working capital terms. So our decision making will be, uh, you know, uh, the, the return on capital employed rather than margin, right? But with the current set of uh, you know, other other variables, we, we expect the margins to improve. Right? I will not uh, uh, give a specific number, but we should see an year-on improvement. Sure. And, and then what would be our vision on ROC, uh, I mean return on capital employed in the three years? We, we want to get to about 15% initially, uh, right, within a couple of years, and then from then, then on to about 25% in the steady state. 25% uh, uh, in five years? Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, I mean, you, we have been quite vocal about our inorganic strategy, right? And um, um, I think it would be at a decent stage as we uh, we plan to have some update by uh, by the next quarter. Uh, so what's the size we are looking at in terms of revenue, um, um, uh, the acquisition that we are looking at? What What is the range or the size that we are looking at? Our sweet spot is anywhere between, uh, you know, 40 to $100 million in, in terms of annual revenue for, for our size, right? Uh, we will not be able to give a specific size for the, uh, the couple of targets that are in question right now. But, but uh, you know, the, 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 from our, where we are today, I think, I think uh, anything that, that's in excess of $40 million up to $100 million is, is in the sweet spot for us. Fair enough, fair enough. And 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 just one last uh, thing on the on the R and D front. Uh, um, uh, I mean, annually, what, what sort of R and D cost that we incur? We do not have any R and D costs on the books. And 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 and, and I think anything. Um, I mean, we have, uh, do we have to spend any anything on the R and D front, or it's not required as a as per our business. Not, 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 not by design for the for the build to print work we do. In case of the build to spec work where there is design involved, there might be some upfront investments. But right now, that's not material. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. I think yeah, um, that's it from my side. Um, all the very best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vinit Agarwal from Aditya Billa Money. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, team. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on good numbers so i have a couple of questions uh, first is if i understand it correctly uh, on the export side or defense side per se uh, middle east tension is driving growth so as this thing uh, normalize uh, then can we expect some softness on the defense orders or growth no, I, I don't think the, the growth was driven by the tension in the Middle East. I think the, in general the defense spending is going up throughout the world. Right? Yeah, no, it, exactly. We, we've uh, been executing on a disguised defense contract and, uh, you know, the recent, uh, you know, the recent you know, uh, global updates have really just um, added to that business um, as far as with other clients we've been working, we've been seeing, um, you know, a, an increase in outlook and orders in that regard. Okay. And uh, second is, apart from uh, aerospace, defense, and medical segment, uh, any other sector or any other segments where we are focusing on uh, two, two to three years down the line? Yeah, so, so really, uh, you know, medical and industrial... Uh, I'm sorry, sir, you're sounding very distant. Uh, 
Sorry. Uh, so medical and industrial are the two other key sectors uh, that we are going to continue to focus on. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we are, uh, you know, today have a much larger portion of our business in aero and defense. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, that, that, that those sectors have been, uh, you know, very good for our business, and the outlook in those two sectors are very good as well. So, yes, we do want to um, diversify a bit, but again, you know, the, the air and defense piece uh, continues to be robust for us and the outlook is solid as well. But, but, but yes, we do have a dedicated focus also on medical and industrial. So would you like to give us some number or, or the mix which uh, will be do, uh, pushed after two, three years? Yeah, so I, ideally we would like to get it, you know, where it's, you know, 25% of the business is, um, you know, 25% medical, 25% industrial, and then, um, you yeah, know, maybe A and B make up, um, you know, 50%. Uh, that I would say that's probably a, a guess of where we would like to be in <clears throat> in about two to three years. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Krishna Bodhanapu for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, thank you very much to everybody for joining this evening. As you, as you saw, uh, the performance in Q4 was quite robust, and so was it for the year. Uh, like I said, and, and I think like uh, Anthony and Srini also reiterated, we're very confident in what lies ahead. Uh, we're seeing a very strong pipeline. Um, the macro supports our business. Uh, we are in the right sectors, be it A&D, medical, industrial, where all uh, sectors where uh, we spend in the type of uh, uh, solutions and the type of products that we provide is only increasing. And I think we've built a fabulous uh, capability in the management team with some of the best leaders in the respective segments, be it the operation side, supply chain side, go-to-market side, um, sales side, etc. cetera. Um, so we have a full complement of the team uh, in place now after, uh, after about 12 months of really finding the right leaders and making sure that they're well integrated. So we're very confident for FY25. And uh, I'll just end by saying thank you very much for your support over the last nine, ten months that we've been publicly traded uh, as a company. Uh, this is our first full financial year, and I'm very sure that uh, you will be pleased with the uh, results we will again deliver, not just for this year, but also create a pipeline and a backlog that will take us into the same trajectory into the coming few years. Thank you very much for your support. Have a good evening, and we'll speak again next quarter. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.